Hey, Matt Yasa here with another episode of Glassmith. Today we'll be looking at making some of our own tools, a graphite push, a graphite reamer, and then a special mold using this plate. Now it's quicker to use a machine to sand it down, but I'll just be using the sanding paper. And I've already got some attached here to my railing, and these rods can vary in price between three to nine dollars, depending on what size you get. And for today's project, I think a three-fourths inch would work pretty well. And then I'll go ahead and start working on the reamer first. I'm gonna hold it at an angle and just start rubbing it back and forth to start tearing away at that carbon. You can see really quickly this is tearing into it. You can see we already have some sides here. I think I'm gonna go for a four-sided reamer. And you don't wanna breathe any of this graphite dust in. Wearing a mask would be a good idea. This is a very messy process. That's why I'm doing this outside. Before I kill a vampire with this thing. And right here you can see the finished product. It has four edges. It's also very sharp. You can definitely go down further and get more of a gradual slope. But just for this preview, I'm, I'm just gonna do that. And now I've attached a finer grit paper and this will help me sand it a little bit smoother. And then to make the push would be the same technique. You just need to adjust the angle and then go on all sides. And so then I'm doing it much more upright instead of slanted. And that should give me a much more blunted tip. And a little trick I discovered, uh, after you use the finer grade sandpaper to get a nice polish on it, you can actually use a paper towel. Then I'll switch over to that, that finer grade. And it does take a while to polish it down with the paper towel, but you get a very reflective finish on it. It's pretty cool. You can see it pretty rounded right there, so now I'm gonna finish it off with that paper towel trick. And it's easy to do on the push, you just rotate it back and forth. And you can see it's shined up a little bit there, still got a little bit of marks in mine, but it'll still perform pretty well. And now if you have the extra tools, you could cut these down and put handles on them, and actually make quite a few tools out of just one rod. But if you don't wanna do that, you could shape a tool on each end, so that'll give, give you two tools out of one rod, and now for this last project, it's going to be a square graphite mold. I'm going to measure it off in halves and cut it down. And one of the reasons that I do like to make some of my own tools is, of course, to save on a little bit of money. Uh, but also just as a creative person, it's just kind of fun to do that process. So both the graphite push and reamer are roughly around $30 each. If you do need the push, I do recommend you make your own. However, the reamer, there are a large selection of brass reamers available. And I would definitely recommend a brass one if you're looking to buy. And then a particular mold like this wouldn't be available to buy. So it is something that would have to be made. So to hold together the mold, I'm gonna use some aluminum tape and these corner brackets will be used to hold it in place while I put it together. So the original plate was half a foot squared. Now it is cut down into three inch squared sections. Now when I was originally thinking a three inch box, I didn't think it would be that large. But now that I have it about halfway put together, it, it's looking pretty big. Now when applying tape, it's always good to start from the middle and work out. That way you don't trap any air inside the seal and then push very firmly to work the two surfaces together so that the glue gets really stuck on there. And now that I have two sides done, I'll put them together and repeat the process to finish it up. And I know it's not the prettiest thing, but I think it'll definitely work out. I'll probably do some modifications as time goes. Real quick, go ahead and make sure you go up there and hit that like button. That definitely helps out the video and the channel. 
Also, you can leave a comment if you have a question or suggestion or, or just to say hi. Now, I do have a good amount of ideas and projects planned for the channel, but if there's something you would like to see made, I can try to work it into the schedule very quickly. And for example, one suggestion that I'm kind of excited to get started on would be a Galileo thermometer. And that was suggested by a user by the name Grandma Loves the Scuba. And it's a cool little thermometer that works on the principles of buoyancy. You have a container full of liquid and then you put in weights of slightly different densities. And then as the temperature outside changes, it will change the density of the liquid and those weights will rise and lower. It's pretty cool. Now I like to come in with a kind of a colder flame to work up the temperature on these thicker tubes. I know other artists would disagree and would just start with a very heavy flame right away. And with the idea that it's more of the heating and expanding the glass outward that is less stressful on it than the cooling process where it's going to contract and try to pull that outward glass back in. Now I'll go ahead and attach a blow hose onto the tube and it has a swivel at the end of it so that it allows me to rotate and blow into it at the same time. I'm gonna remove a little bit of glass before I pop a hole and you notice that I rotate as I'm pulling the glass out. And this helps me pull glass out from the center and so then when I pop the hole, it'll be very centered at the end. And then as you pop that hole, you just wanna heat up that little spot and blow into it. And here comes the hole and I end up popping a lot of glass debris out that time. I'll slow down the video and zoom in to see it here. And you'll notice that it follows in the direction up towards my ventilation system. And that's why you need a good ventilation system before you start glass blowing. You know, if you get that stuff in your lungs, it doesn't come out very easily. And I'm going to go ahead and try to, this new reamer I just made. And it's looking like it's working pretty well for a homemade reamer. I'm going to use it on this tube and open it up a bit and flare it. And to flare it, I'll just come down on one edge and hold the reamer still. Whereas to ream it, I would just spin the reamer around. Now I'll heat up both of the areas to make a nice solid connection. And I'll melt off the opposite end, which is that pulled point, which will leave the end pretty thin. I'm gonna have to just melt that down a little bit and then puff into it to make a nice round bottom. And now before I puff into it, I'm gonna get a good base heat into the glass. And as I turn the lights off here, you'll see the nice gradient of heat. It's hotter there in the middle and cooler as it goes back towards the blow tube where my hand is at. And then once you got that base heat, the core temperature up, then you really wanna turn up your flame and get it to a good molten state before you put it into that mold and then give it a good puff. And then as it puffs out into the walls of the graphite, it'll suck the heat out and allow it to cool very quickly and maintain that shape. And then it'll contract a little bit as it cools, allowing you to remove it from the mold. And here's the finished product. I think it's looking pretty good for my first attempt here. I decided to leave those ripples in from the pressing process, but normally you would go back in and melt those ripples out of the sides. It does make a kind of a stylish look though. And that should do it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. My name's Matt Yasa and have a great day.